This is the January meeting of the Edison Northwest School District Board of Directors. <coughs> Looking for a motion to adopt the agenda. Uh, I would like to move that we adopt the agenda. Second. Can you guys speak up? Yeah, I can't hear at all. I'd like to move that we adopt the agenda set for this meeting. Thank you, I can hear that. I seconded that. <laughs> All right, I, I have a couple changes. Does anyone else want to say, have anything before? All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we actually need to, um, we need to remove action items F and G. Yes. And we will take those up next week. We have another meeting next week to final to uh, discuss the budget more. Um, so we're going to remove those two. There's no discussion <coughs> items, so we don't need 45 minutes for that. And um, before the adjournment, we, we do need to add an executive session. In place of item five. In place of item five uh, for the purpose of um, discussing a personnel matter. I so move those changes. Okay. <coughs> so all in favor of accepting the agenda with those changes? Aye. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Okay. Do we have any public communication tonight? Yes, Steve. <coughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, I stand today to express the dismay the Addison Northwest Teachers Association feels at the administration's proposal to reach a level funded budget on the backs of students and teachers. Your level funded proposal from the last session cuts three elementary teachers and over three support staff positions to achieve those savings. I would ask why the people working direct, most directly with students dealing with their education and well-being are yet again asked to bear the burden of the cuts while other spending is left unexamined and unchecked. While teaching staff levels have been cut or left stable over the last several years, central office, office budgets continue to expand while student numbers shrank. An additional administrative position, the Director of Guidance, has been created at the high school, bringing the number of administrators to four. And all the while, we are being told that fewer students means fewer teachers. Please explain the logic of expanding these functions while there are fewer students and fewer teachers and staff to manage. If the board feels that cuts are needed, perhaps they should examine the expansion of these administrative costs rather than targeting people who work directly with students. I look forward to hearing your explanation of how a human resources manager and a director of guidance serve more children than the equivalently expensive three elementary school teachers that are being deprived of their jobs. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And I believe we will discuss those items uh, when we get into the budget discussion coming up. Which I guess is now. Is there, is there any more public comment? Okay. So, Joanne? Thank you. Um, I assume everyone received version three of the budget in their emails. I did receive uh, questions from two of the members of the board and I have, um, I will be able to meet and to answer those questions in the Google Doc that I created, uh, which has frequently asked questions about the FY19 uh, uh, budget. So this evening we would start by answering any further questions you have about version three. Um, we would like to present to you the revenue picture and then have a conversation in anticipation of the action items concerning the uh, fund balance uh, for FY17. Thank you. Um, so in version three, you can see that the administration actually went a little bit below uh, the, the previous uh, version two of a level funded budget by about $10,000. Um, and I guess at this point, I'd just like to open it up for any questions. The, uh, the frequently asked question sheet is on your Google Doc, as I had previously mentioned. And um, from this point. All right, so go ahead, Finn. Finn. I have a question. Uh, so we'll, I'll just cut two parts, and I'll start with the first one about what the um, <coughs> individual departmental headings pay for, uh, wh I, I, whether those are a breakout from the direct instruction or whether those are their own items. Um, so You're referring to the non-personnel costs? 
Uh, yes, that's right. Those Are lines, you, like 1102 through 11. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Art, language arts, world heritage, you know, and on down the list. So, so that is a I mean, breakout of departments. Yes. Um, basically, just so that the high school can actually track um, expenses that are non-personnel related a little bit better in the coming year because we found that it got squashed a little too much okay. in your current year budget. And are there funds available to those departments for the purchasing of equipment and, mm -hmm. and supplies that are not listed in those subheadings that are part yeah, of Yeah, there's still some up in 1100 general also. Okay. So what kind of just delineates the cut? What, what ends up being accounted for in the individual departments rather than general? So that was part of the question that you posed. And again, it's in, on the uh, frequently asked uh, worksheet. But I'm going to ask Stephanie to address it because she had a formula by which she was going through this decision. that there used to be an art de department, a social studies, a science, etc. So um, basically the reductions uh, total $24,000 from all those department areas and um, they, that's 20, uh, it's total, it, it's roughly 24, I mean, I'm sorry, it's roughly 20% of the proposed supply um, budgets in each of those areas. Yeah, so I, I noticed that 20% um, number did seem pretty consistent. Yeah. And I, I take it yeah. that those decisions were made at your level. Yes, right? yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. My concern with that, and I'm glad that you're here, um, yeah. is that the savings that, that I just wanted to double check that the savings that we realize from all those departmental cuts represent a sizable portion of each department's expenditures, but not a very sizable portion of the budget. So the amount that we save in our, to our taxpayers I wanted to make sure that that wasn't um, much less significant than the amount that those departments might suffer for not having those funds. Right, right. I, I, I wouldn't have offered that up if I didn't feel we could provide the services we need to to our, to our students uh, with what's remaining. It, it is, I mean, that's always been, the, you know, the, the reality of the budget that those, the, the supplies and textbooks in those areas within the department groupings is a very small percentage of, of the total budget. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Mark. So version one to version two, on our last time that 1,200 shows up, mm -hmm. we have a riff of five full-time special ed paras, but then in version two to three, we're adding a full time. So is that really just a net of four lost? Or is that, am I missing? One was moved. No, one is actually, well, okay. So okay. in the and first. Part of my thing got cut off, so I don't have. Oh, you didn't do landscape. No, I did not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find 1200. We're looking at version two. Yeah, I'm looking first at the, the first comparison. So we have a RIF of 5.0 FTE SPED Paris and a RIF of 0.55 FTE SPED Teacher. Mm -hmm. So when we went to do version three, we discovered that there was one um, FTE in special education that had not been included in version two, but was part of the service plan. So we had to put that in. So that's where you see the add in mm -hmm. 1.0 FTE SPED Teacher. It's a different kind of position, but it's something that was needed in the service plan and it wasn't included in version two. Um, and then we discovered also in our analysis of basically when you decide that you need to reduce, um, say, paras or something in any given area, there is a hierarchy as to which positions versus which people end up having seniority. And so we had to shuffle uh, that five sped para couldn't all be SPED people. We had to shuffle the positions around. So basically, now SPED is not really losing a total of five. Um, the whole budget is losing a total of five. So we had to shuffle a couple of the people that would have seniority. In terms of seniority. Yeah, because our parents are in seniority not based on the department that they work in, special ed versus regular ed. It's based on their date of hire and the title that they have. Got it. So then overall, how many 
under how many people are being riffed under version three? <coughs> are proposed to be riffed, I should Kara, say. Kara, three. And still three elementary school teachers? Yes. So? No, it's district wide. Parents mm. are district wide. No, he said three elementary teachers. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm just trying to get the whole, yeah. and then we're still at a point six or a one. Of administration, administration. Yeah. correct. Yeah. There was support staff listed for reduction too, wasn't there? We were just talking about that. That's the parents. Yeah, parents are support staff. Do you mean like facilities? Uh, yeah, that was my understanding. When I saw support staff, I thought we were talking about facilities and, and paper pushers. We, we lumped everyone under the title of the title of support staff, custodians, school secretaries, oh, okay. paraeducators, anyone that's covered under that particular master agreement. Okay. And remember, I had mentioned last time it would be difficult to be more specific because yes. of notification to staff, right. but the FTEs are there in that category are so, accurate. So we're dealing with a reduction of 6.6 .6 FTEs? I thought it was 3.8. 3.3 Right, but then we six. added back in the one okay. said. So is that right? So six. it's closer to seven. Closer to yeah. seven, yes. Closer to seven, yes. okay. <clears throat> I mean, you round that off at seven anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yes. So just to clarify on that, um, you said there was one added back in in version three because they actually, we've already, we've said already put we it were in our service plan. That. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so if, um, I mean, if version two is what ends up being approved, things are going to need to be shuffled to accommodate for that anyway, correct? Yes. Right. Yes. R version three is more like a more is like a more accurate right. picture yeah. of what version two is supposed to be. Right. Correct. Right. And Pretty and much. there's yeah. there's only a ten thousand dollar difference. I can't see why we would overall try to undo what was done to mm -hmm. move backwards right. for that amount of money. So I I have a question. I did ask this and it there was an answer, but I just need a little more clarification on the three to six athletics. Yes. There's a couple increases. Um, Line 1400, line 2720. Right. So I guess I'm. Why? Yeah, just educate me. Like, what's. what? I mean, I know we're bringing it all under the. the whatever. Uh, over, it's all going to be overseen by one person. Um, but why does that make the cost increase? I mean, we already have three through six athletics, correct? Correct, we do. Because right. we're, we're at, yes, and we're, we're, when we start to operate under the Vermont Principals Association rules and regulations, we have to have people that are able to do the work, such as uh, legitimate referees, and we pay them. Coaches have to be trained, and there's a cost associated with that, and also in, in um, hiring them, uh, and in the transportation piece. So it, there is a, uh, given the, the differences between having volunteers run those programs and now having to elevate the professionalism, there is a cost association associated with Wh that. Why is it that we have to now no, no longer use volunteers? No, you, we will use volunteers when we can, uh -huh. but it's, it is preferred that coaches are hired to, um, so that we can train them and that they will operate under the Vermont Principals Association and that we can design the schedule and, and make sure that they are following those regulations, such as a certain number of practices um, in between games and really elevating the professional aspect of So why is it that we weren't doing that before? Because we, all, we had four separate, uh, three separate elementary schools and we were not operating under the Vermont Principals Association and people were able to make their own decisions about schedules and practices and so this was the expansion of Pete's charge yes grades 3 now through grade 12 okay. thank you yeah. I guess I was just surprised because I actually thought that that was going to result in a s cost savings <laughs> I guess I was. It would be if we were still using primarily volunteers. It sounds yes. like. Yeah. Is it not possible to use primarily volunteers under the Principals Association guidelines? It's difficult to require that a volunteer go through a certain number of hours of training and that they have to have sc scheduled practices according to the Vermont Principals Association. You know, is it you possible? can. Possible. 
It's possible. It's possible. Okay. Are we likely to find people who will be able to accomplish those requirements even if we pay them? So I'm, I can't <laughs> answer that question because I am right. not the athletic director, I but know. I would hope that that this would elevate the, the skill development of our students, that we would be, it's an equity issue, we're developing each of our kids in the elementary schools at the same level, so that when they get to the middle school, there are opportunities that are created for everyone because they've all been well prepared. And the coaches that we're working with are operating under the same rules and the same uh, standards so that our kids are safe and getting a very good experience in grades three through 12. It all makes sense, I mean it's, the Principals Association has the rules for a reason. Yeah. And we were apparently just kind of sliding underneath the table. Well, I, don't, I don't know that we were, I mean, I know that when I've coached, I was at, at the elementary school, we were directed to the Principals Association mm -hmm. website. We were, we were given concussion training. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually not real clear about the necessity, I mean, this is, of course, because I've coached, so I'm like, well, I was a great coach. No, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't a great coach. That's, you were. But, but that's, but, but, but I'm, I'm just. But isn't part of the issue related to declining enrollment? I mean, that's, that's the, you can't have teams in certain schools because there's not enough students. So without doing this, hmm. we may not have teams in certain places. Well, we for don't the, for already. The, I mean. But we, we will with this. Correct. Yeah. Hence the increased transportation costs. It would give us more of an opportunity right. to pool, and, and we do this now with um, with Addison School uh, and yeah. our and our basketball program, I yeah. believe. Um, so it would give more opportunity for more kids to join into sports, at a with standards in mind. Uh, and I don't want to discount. Uh, we have some great volunteers. I mean, I, that's this is not about the volunteers. <laughs> it really isn't. But if, if someone did not want to go on a website and look at the concussion video, they don't have to really do that. So, you know, Pete's oversight and creation of a, a much more, uh, I would say, structured and, uh, and professional program for our kids makes it safer and gives them a better opportunity for, for growth and development. I'd like to ask another clarifying question, if I can, um, about the uh, principal, Office of the Principal Services. Yes. Um, I'm assuming that that is similar to d direct instruction in that it encompasses both salaries and also some other expenses that has to do with the Office of the Principal? Yes. yes. So who is included in the Office of the Principal, roughly, who is not included under the support staff? So it would be a, a school um, administrative <laughs> assistants that provide direct support to the um, to the to the principal. Okay. It would be you know it would be a variety of supplies and equipment that's directed towards supporting the office of the principal. Professional development for the the people who are operating in the office of the principal. Mm -hmm. um, did I say special equipment? Uh, yep, there'd be dues and fees. If dues and fees if they're of, uh, members of an association. association. Yes. So this is like principal, vice principal, mm -hmm. yep. um, Loretta. Uh, administrative assistance, right. yep. Okay. Um, but not like the school nurse or the counselors. No. Those Nurses are, are separate. Staff. Okay. So just to just as a as a point, as a mathematical point for all of those viewers and listeners, um, the uh, the office of the Office of Principal Services, the, the proposed cuts in budget to direct instruction and to the Office of Principal Services are roughly comparable in this proposed plan. The um, direct instruction receives about a four, a little more than 4% cut, and the Office of the Principal Services receives a little more than a 5% cut. Um, the direct instruction makes a much bigger impact because it's um, six and a half times larger. Than, than the principal's office. Um, I too share the concerns of uh, the, the public comment we had earlier to make sure that we don't allow budget restrictions to start shifting the balance of our instruction to become more and more um, distanced from education itself, that the teachers have a, have a pr primacy and priority in our system. But I also do feel like at this stage of the budget that is reflected and that cuts are at parity. 
if we wanted to discuss you know further cuts to administration down the road that would be a different kind of discussion but I do think that that's this particular bud iteration is even handed in the way that it cuts mm -hmm. both above the line and below the line if you want to think of it that way that, that's sort of a comment and you Thank said you. that they were at four to five percent the 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 general instruction receives a four point two percent or something roughly mm -hmm. cut and principal's office five and a half percent mm -hmm. cut so it's cut slightly steeper on a percentage basis it's much less it saves much less money ultimately because it's we don't spend as much money there and we're losing four percent of our students so yeah that seems to be it does seem right yeah, it, it, it makes it, sense. It takes, it takes for granted that, may, that the current balance is desirable, which is not something we necessarily want to take for granted. But assuming that that is the case, the cuts are even, hmm. slightly slanted against the, uh, the principal's office. Thank you. Okay, are there more questions? One more. Mark. 2190 other support services students $14,000 cell phone costs and tuition reimbursement where are we looking where are you mark 21 version 3 which uh, I think comparison so. 3 in this I believe it's oh, right things. here right. yeah thank you <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Is that just moving things from other places that they used okay, to be so and you're cleaning up line, line items that we oh. can't afford in the 21c yep. grant for the health insurance so um, this relates to our after school program <coughs> and uh, we have to have communi the cell phones obviously we have to have communication amongst and between the staff to run the programs and with parents for emergency purposes uh, and it all it's reflects uh, tuition reimbursement for all the positions in the administration of that program and tuition reimbursement as a uh, as workshops and conferences for people in that after school program so 2190 is all after school program no, that's no. the administrative portion of the after-school program. Um, your after-school program direct instruction is in 1127. Okay, I guess I meant the inverse. Everything in 2190 is after-school it, yes. related? Yes, okay. yes, but it also, we also have 1127, which is also after-school. Which is named appropriately after-school program. <laughs> <laughs> Because the majority of it is in a in the grant, grant, which there's other grants and other funding fee sources that cover the rest. So were these cell, the cell phones were in? They're in the current year being paid for, but they did not make it into version two of the budget, and so this is a change to version three to include those cell phones that are currently in. We're currently year. paying for them from the general fund. Yeah. In other words, it's just a better definition of it's where a, the. We yeah. scrutinized the lines and the budget and made sure there wasn't things missing further. Does that answer your question, Mark? Yep. So, how about this? So, just for the for here, can you walk us through the assumptions of the the bond that are in version? Just, I see them here, but just that's not Jermaine. The but they're, 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 but the, they're in here. They're here. Yeah. So you would like yeah. to know how the administration addressed yeah, the potential? Talk, talk us through the sure. assumptions that you Sure, absolutely. You're mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, one of the things that was not in version two was that your energy cost savings for the EEI project was not projected into your expenditures. It wasn't decreasing your energy costs. The second thing that wasn't um, happening was your interest on the year one amount if the bond is to pass was not incorporated into your expenses in version two. So in version three, you have added costs in your uh, 5100 debt services for that interest, that first year interest only payment. And then you have decreases in all of your energy costs and we split it out amongst the schools because individually, each of your, we couldn't say decrease energy costs by the whole EEI savings all at the high school because it would make it look like you had no costs mm -hmm. for your energy in your budget. So we incrementally, by the size of the school, allocated out, and the items we decreased were electricity and fuel. So heating and, heating and electricity are the two lines that we decreased, and we made it match exactly what EEI is promising will be the energy savings in year one. So. If we pass the bond, we will save on a yearly basis about thirty thousand dollars. 
next year. If you pass the bond. We will save in total right, about because $30,000. Because you're saying the interest is 179 <coughs> versus the energy savings is 212. Yes, that's right. Yes. yes. About 30,000 yes. or more? Yep. And it's incorporated yeah. into version three. Yep. Okay. 30,000 is the guaranteed difference. It could, yeah. yes. right. it could be could be greater. More. Yes. A guaranteed difference if we pass the bond. Correct. Yes of a benefit to the budget of $30,000. Yes. After having paid off the debt. Good. You want to yeah. look into the camera and say it? <laughs> <laughs> this bond is self-funded and gives us a budget surplus. Okay. Guaranteed to us by stand. the engineering firm who's going to conduct it if it passes, right? Okay. Okay. I would like to make a motion if that's acceptable. I mean, you can make a motion, sure. <laughs> I can't just see tell what you happens to, to you, George. <laughs> just do it. Just see. I think that the board should adopt version three of the budget presented by the administration. May I um, ask wait. that we, can we complete wait our we budget do. presentation? <laughs> we I have a. We just, oh, there's a couple. There's a, there, I mean, we I'm, should see if there's a second. Oh, okay. We should see if there's a second okay. to this motion. Let's wait. I'll second, George. Thank you. Okay. All right, Joanne, go ahead. Maybe, maybe, maybe please finish the budget presentation because ne next we'll be talking about the revenue and the fund balance that we anticipate. Let's discuss. All right. Is that good? Yeah, and the, just the numbers at the student per, per pupil level. So, John, we are working on that. I'm sorry, but the staff ratio um, charts were not available for today. I will, um, they'll be available before the next meeting, but we are, we are working on that. Okay. We, st staff ratio, but. He's talking per he's pupil, talking about per pu per pupil. Oh, it's in this, it's in this presentation, the per pupil cost. Okay, okay. Right. Yes, as are we go through the, we're that? ready to do that. Let me. Okay, oh, okay. so okay. We, do a, we do have a motion. Uh, do we want a table? You already have you can, this. Yes. We can discuss. discuss we can use this as discussion for the motion. Around the motion. Yeah. The motion, yeah. Okay. More information is needed, so let's discuss it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Just had one thing to say. It's fine. Okay, Elizabeth, do we have enough? I'm sure. <coughs> do we know that? Okay. So this first sheet you have um, is basically taking uh, us through the calculation of your equalized spending per pupil. Okay. It's taking it on version two and on version three. Um, and basically it's kind of walking through the same calculation that you may be used to seeing in the annual books. Um, I may have uh, verbalized some of the lines a little bit differently, just making, trying to make it a little more clear as to what we're looking at. So it starts out with your total expenditure budget based on what is proposed in these two budget versions. Um, then you take out your local revenue, which we calculated. Um, and I made note that this is not including your on behalf tech center payment. That's been confused in the past, I, I believe, in your budgets. Um, and then you're also taking out what we're estimating to use in surplus funds from the prior fiscal year to apply as local revenue. What that ends up with is a dollar figure that is to be funded by the education fund. We then take out your equalized pupils, which was a finalized number given to us by the Agency of Education, 979.12. That's not dollars, right? No. And that does have a dollar sign. You are right. <laughs> That's the only one that's not supposed to have a dollar right. sign. Um, the equalized spending per pupil, um, as you can see, that's what it calculates. And then you have a projected, the projected threshold came from the Agency of Education. There again, they can change that number. So uh, they don't usually change it a lot, but it is not a firm number unless they say it is. Um, so the bolded next line shows us how much we are below the threshold in both of these scenarios in the budget um, per pupil. 
And then we take into consideration the equalized spending per pupil and divide it by the forecasted homestead tax yield. That is a number that also the state of Vermont gives us. There again, it can change, but they give us that estimate to use for these calculations. It ends up bringing us to an equal, an equalized estimated union tax rate. So that's the whole union consolidated tax rate. We then get an eight cent consolidation incentive revenue in FY19. That's the number that declines each year by two cents. That brings us to what is our estimated union tax rate with our incentive applied. We compare that to the prior year actual union tax rate, which is what we're operating on right now in fiscal year 18. And then below, it shows us what the estimated tax rate increase is versus what the state estimated tax rate increase is and what the difference is. So in version one, it's we're slightly dropping below what the state has quoted as an estimate. And in version three, sorry, version two, we're slightly dropping below. Version three, we're actually dropping by a whole, a little more than a penny over what the state has estimated. Can I ask a couple questions? Mm -hmm. um, Why? <laughs> no, no. Um, what's the, what is the reason for the difference in the, the revenue between version two and version three? Um, the largest reason is special education. So basically you're taking, we're doing basically a mock special education uh, report to try to calculate what the new revenue is based on the changes between the two budgets. Okay. So, that that works by I'm I'm ignorant as to the, as to how that revenue flows. Where does that that revenue comes to the district from the state? The state, from the state. in order yeah. to help. And fund they have a formula education. for how they calculate. Okay. We have different buckets and different ways in which the state provides reimbursement, okay. and it's too complicated to get into today. Although that could be an education in the future. Yeah, <laughs> not now, but I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. So the main, <laughs> or one of the large reasons for the difference in the estimated tax rate for FY19 and the current tax rate is the yield, correct? It's really a conglomerate of a bunch of things, but the yield does affect it, yes. Okay. And the yield did change between FY18 and FY19. So can you remind me again why our tax rate is going up by nine cents, even though we're slightly less than level funding our uh, our budget. Assuming that that's what we're doing. Um, well, based on all of the figures that the state of Vermont gives us to help us calculate, and then we extrapolate our own expenditures and our own budgets. Um, when the state put out their letter that gave us all of these figures, like the homestead tax rate and all of that, they already estimated a 9.4 cent increase on the tax rate. They're calculating that based on what they believe all of our budgets would come in at if we were to try to stay somewhat close to the level budget that we're currently in. So They're taking into consideration your, your salary increases, your benefit increases, because they have the, all that information just like we do. But given that we've actually level funded, in this proposal, actually level funds, where does that extra nine cents per, per hundred weight? It's um, not to our schools, somewhere else. No, no. And part of it is at the state level. They're having to fund their retirement system is one of the big mm -hmm. items. So they're finding ways to reduce the education spending that they are having to kick out towards your budget. Um, because as you can see, the education fund dollars that they are going to have to give to us changes based on our revenue, based on where we, so even though we're level funded, our expenditures are in a different place. So even at level funded version two, your expenditures and where they are in the budget and what they're being spent on are different than your current year with the same dollar figure at the bottom. So your revenue in the current year is different than version two revenue for the projected year. That revenue will fluctuate that tax rate just as much as increasing or decreasing your expenditures will in some ways, if that makes any sense. Well, I'm just looking at it a whole, as a whole snapshot. <laughs> if you take the $21 million figure, 
it's not 9% higher next year nope. than it was the previous year. I know. So where is that nine, that nine cent tax increase reflected? Is there like a line item in the budget that I missed, which is like extra payment to the state to have it get redistributed to other school districts no. that are poorer, or how does that work? No, they're basically just giving us less revenue. Oh, I see, okay. <coughs> okay. It's, they're taking away revenue. So there's less money coming to us from yes. the state. If right. Exactly. If I may. Which means we're more on the hook to generate, that nine cents has to come from our property. We would have to generate more. Got it, okay. Yeah. What what happened was that the state was not properly funding the teacher's mm -hmm. retirement plan. That's okay. Part of it. Yep. And they they became aware of that suddenly. It was a revelation. And somebody thought that they really ought to do something about it. And so now they're putting more money into that. But it comes from the education fund, which as you remember is a flat, empty room when they start. There's no money there. Right. They have to collect tax to put in there before they can give anything out. And the education fund is funded via proper, via income taxes or? No, property it's property property pooled property, property tax. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's why it all goes, act whatever, why it all goes to the center and pools and then comes back out. But all of, it doesn't, back all out. of it doesn't come back out okay. because some of it's going someplace else. Yeah, okay, I understand. I, th I think that I actually understand that. Thank you. So we'd like to move on to the next uh, part of the presentation, which is um, administration's recommendation about fund balance. Thank you very much for this. Yeah. Is that helpful? Yeah. Yes. Extremely. Yes, it is. Uh, I'll look at it. I can look it up myself. <laughs> John, we can answer your questions if you want. Well, what's the, what was the tax rate? What was the increase of, of the cents last year? You mean between to the previous year? To the previous. The previous year. Yeah. What was that tax? I mean, that? if you can't, if you I don't, I think I do have it. We can figure it out. Uh, I, I can, I can give out. you. I can give you a little bit of insight into that. If it's in here. We received a ten cent benefit on right. our tax because page, we consolidated. Be. However, because of that empty room, they didn't have the ten cents to give to anybody. I don't know. They don't. So have they had to increase the tax rate by three percent so that they would have the money in there to give out the 10 cents to the districts that consolidated. Too many people adopted Wait, the consolidation. So That's right. every, they were, um, they were <coughs> counting on more fee collection, right. weren't they? Every uh, town uh, last year <laughs> had a tax decrease, Not right? Every, every, every town, town except for Virgins, except for the city. Yeah. We're everybody, but, in it, but it was a minuscule, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So everybody saw a tax decrease last year mm -hmm. and we're talking in the range of eight cents this year. Mm -hmm. well, it Everybody it received a decrease cents, last but, year. And about but eight. for our consolidation, it would have been a 10 cent increase. Right. right. The state is oh. basically okay. getting a 10 cent. I mean, right. I don't like a 9.4 cents, right? But I mean, I'm trying to figure out some way to make it helpful. Last year we received, we had a decrease. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. Go ahead. A small decrease. So we can't answer your question right now, John, but we will get that to you. Okay. Um, yeah, my number only shows what the current year tax rate, uniform tax rate is. Um, so the second part is an attachment. Um, these are figures that the auditors have given to us on our FY17 year end balances and comparing it to where we were at the end of FY16. So basically, the end result is that we have a fund balance ending FY17 of 1.629875. Um, the majority of that difference came in FY17. The auditors did list a few uh, reasons down at the bottom as to why some of those numbers changed so drastically, um, but just in that one fiscal year. And so why we're bringing this up to show you is that we have a plan to use that surplus in cooperation with this budget. As you could see in my calculations on page one, we're using 650,000 of that to put towards this budget to get us below the thresholds, to get us below the state estimated mm -hmm. tax rate for all those reasons. Mm. Um, so we're putting it back you know, into the FY19 budget. Um, the second attachment where, is for the uh, where, where where just go ahead and point it out the way 
Where is it in no, here? No, John, in what? No. Uh, Joanne no. just handed the revenue, it The revenue this, handout. In the front page. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So right behind. Sorry. Oh, okay, yep. these are expenditures, right. Yep. So you have attachment one. Okay, that yeah. That shows the, that's the, this is your general operating budget, and it's numbers from the auditors. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth, before you go to the next page, do you want to just maybe explain what those three categories are that are highlighted at the bottom of why we had this, yep. this um, difference? So basically balance. they are showing that in uh, one particular case we had 215000 in additional revenue that was over what we expected in the budget for FY17. <coughs> um, they are saying also that we had 544000 in expenditure savings. Um, there's a large chunk of that that's in special education. So one, the confusing part about that is that one would think that if you had less expenditures in special education that your overall revenue would be lower. Um, but there was definitely not a proper calculation of what all the revenue was going to be. And so you actually had the opposite of that. You had less expenditures, but you also had additional revenue over your budget in FY17. And then the third piece is that there was additional revenues raised for a deficit fund balance built into your budget. So it, it appears that it was believed you were going to run a deficit and that you had to raise money or put money towards that as if like we are this year with the 650. So we were raising expenditures and part of that was because of a restatement of your audits in FY16. I want to I go back on that. We had a deficit that back several years ago that we decided instead of borrowing the money or raising the taxes yep. that what we would do is we would build that payment into our future budgets. Yep. And so that was the last year of repayment on that. And what ended up happening though is that you didn't really need it because of the restatement of those mm -hmm. audits you didn't actually end up needing that 280. But the restatement of the audit was too late Eight. to make exactly. a change. Exactly, it was. In exactly. That. Right. It was like June or May or June mm -hmm. of that end of yeah. that next fiscal year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And the majority of the additional revenue was transportation. Um, transportation was actually the 215,000. Um, for some reason, it was not actually built into your budget, but you do receive transportation reimbursement revenue, and it's about two hundred fifteen thousand. Hmm. That's a that's an annual thing. It's an annual mm -hmm. thing. It's based on your expenditures that you have in transportation, and um, we build it into a stat book report that we send off to the agency of education, and they actually calculate it. We don't even have how they calculate it. But it but it wasn't it's in annual. our in our budget. No. Oh. But it is now. Has it ever been in the budget? Well, one thing oh, I noticed no. about your current year is it didn't show up on your cash flow report for this year either, and I've questioned the state, at, actually at the state level, questioned them about it, and we are definitely getting the money. So that might have been where the miss happened, is that if the state didn't give a report saying you were getting it, you may not have budgeted for it, but you do get it every year, and it is reported back to them every year. So. What was the five hundred and forty-four thousand in expense savings? You said that was that was some all of it special education. Special um, ed. Other then there's you know there's a smaller percentage that is just kind of spread out amongst various departments, various schools. That was also a year that we didn't have a lot of energy expenditure because it was a light year. Right, it was right? warmer. It was warmer. But but part of the problem with calculating the special ed is because we get money as reimbursement as opposed to upfront for the expenses yeah so it how can you how can you really budget that well I mean, you can't budget that because of what you just described george but we also have high cost kids moving in and out of the district all the well, time I understand and in this particular year we had a number of kids who no longer either needed mm -hmm. those programs um, because remember, Kara starts budgeting in October. Then we go to the December time frame, January time frame, mm -hmm. where the board adopts a budget, mm -hmm. and all along the way, things are changing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we do the best we can. I'd rather be in this situation oh, yes. than our previous situation. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. So, but we're 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 trying to 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 track those costs more um, closely mm -hmm. to do a better job of budgeting exactly closer to what we think we need. But it's really a moving target. It is a moving target. Yeah. So we don't we don't have the final audit. We do not. This is but their numbers from them. Yes. And and so 
you know, there's some noise, but we're still looking at roughly one and a half million. Yeah. Uh, so maybe one, yep. you know, four, and five, six. And I have checked one. these numbers against what's in your current books. So basically I've run balance sheets and compared them back and forth between their numbers and mine to verify that what they're going to come out with with their final budget is going to match what you've got. And a little less than half of that is currently, pl we're planning to use that to keep the 650 to below keep. to keep the levels of per people spending below the threshold. So that brings us to the next sheet because we, we the administration is recommending three buckets of investments with the, with the fund balance. With the fund balance. Okay. So the next one is. So the next one is attachment two is your food service FY17 year end draft fund balance figures also from the auditors and confirmed is showing um, a deficit of $423,961. So we are recommending that we use that surplus money to fund that deficit and wipe it right off your books. Okay. Um, and, and then lastly? Lastly. Oh, wait, wait, just <laughs> who do we oh, owe sorry. that money to? What's I'm that? sorry? <laughs> who do we owe that money to? Well, we ourselves, <laughs> actually. <laughs> ourselves. Um, so one of the things we discovered when we were reconciling through is that for a number of years you had uh, subsidy transfers budgeted to go from your general fund to help that food service fund maintain its float. And that's normal. Everybody, all the schools do that. But in some cases, the transfers were not actually posted in those fiscal years. And so the deficit in your food service fund wasn't necessarily built because your food service program was running a deficit. It was built because the subsidy transfers were not always actually transferred. From the general fund in those years? From, From the, the general, general fund, fund to, the to the food service fund, yes. Okay. So in essence, if We're you think about it, your ourselves. surplus may be somewhat because you didn't fund transfer to your food service program. Right. Huh. That makes sense. Right. Doesn't it? So this and is is this debt being carried in some in some way, shape, or form? It's sitting on the books as a deficit in the food service fund, on your and it's in your audit. So when you get your draft audit, you're going to see um, a separate balance sheet that's going to say enterprise funds, and you're going to see that dollar figure at the bottom as a negative brackets. They don't roll it in with the general fund; they do list it separately. Okay. And also, just as a tag along to that, um, in these. I think all of the versions that are presented, there's a outgoing fund transfer for yes. 200,000 built in, which will be going to the food service, the food service yeah. now, you know, so moving, moving forward, we have that. And it's okay. been increased it so that we will not build a deficit ever again. We'll try not to build a deficit <laughs> we will not. ever again. We will not, Joanne, come on. <laughs> but the, the, the formula is 20% of the general fund um, should yep. go to fund your food service. So that yep. mm -hmm. represents, that makes sense. yeah. yeah. Could, could you explain the logic of paying it all off now as opposed to paying it off over time? I think part of the most logical reason is that it probably is what resulted in you having such a sizable surplus in the first place. That's one, one reason to go ahead and pay it off and not continue to have it in your budgets year after year <coughs> after year to pay off something that you are capable of paying off right now. Okay. Are there any consequences? To not any pay. Any disadvantages? What, what's the cost of inaction, right? Yeah. I mean, is that we, that, I don't know if that's what John was asking. Yeah, but you've got, you've got money You've got a deficit that, that you've been carrying because you couldn't afford to pay it. Right. And now we've got but money. It so seems only logical that we'd wipe that out. That seems very logical, and I agree with you. What doesn't seem logical, and what I'm still feeling a little bit dense about, is it's not as though this deficit is accruing interest or anything like that. There's no bank that has funded this deficit. It's not my credit card. No. Right? No. So what is it? There isn't any, you know, financial repercussion to keeping it on the books. But um, the auditors want to know. The auditors that we're definitely want to know that we're taking care of it. They want to know what the plan is, and we're going to have a really hard time convincing them why we should not fund it when we have the available funds to do so in our general fund. Especially considering that part of the reason why it's there in the first place is because we didn't transfer funds from the general fund. That's that's really the crux of it. It's yeah. But everybody's been paid, right? Like in terms of all the, the people who provided the services have been yep. paid, the food has been That's paid for. That's why you for. have the deficit. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they all got paid. They all got their money. They all got paid. Yep. So there's deficit in that category. But I'm still, 
I'm, I, I'm willing to table this if I'm the only one who doesn't understand this. Um, it's, it shows up as a deficit, and the auditors don't like to see that. Right. I'm picturing and, them like and they're really tall and like backlit, and they've got blue gloves. Right. But like <laughs> right. And, and we're and we've got we've got a situation where we can wipe it out. I mean, right. I know. I don't want to get visited by the auditors either. But like, <laughs> what are they actually going to do to me? Especially in the middle of the night. <laughs> if they find me, that's well, that's my question. It's kind of just good accounting practices, I think. But yeah. that's a really that's a big four hundred and twenty three thousand dollars of of, right. of money that could be used to like lower the property tax rate. Is a, that's a hard sell to say, like, well, it's because our numbers are weird. So that just made me think of something. Okay. Say that. Yes, please. Good. So <laughs> part of the reason why you wouldn't want to take, say, this 423000 and instead throw it against your current year budget instead and lower that tax rate, what are you going to do in year two? Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do are you in gonna 2020? Raise that million dollars? How are you going to raise that money? Because your expenditure budget is still likely to be relatively close to what it is. It, you know, even if you level fund it, right. then you're out that revenue and you're not going to have this kind of a surplus to go and use against that year's budget. So yeah. you're going to see this huge swing I in see. your budget. That's, okay. part, that's part of the problem why the state has to raise 9.4 cents on the tax rate is because last year they did that. They took a hunk of money and dropped it into that education fund and didn't raise the tax where they probably actually should have last year. So this year we're getting that tax raise plus what's accumulated for this year. It's, okay. yeah, it, it just messes so I, you up going along. And now I understand why we shouldn't use any of that surplus to change the budget necessarily. I'm still not sure what that Im imaginary negative number means, but I'm gonna drop it because well at some point you have to have to take you it, it can't stay there forever you have yeah. to take care of it okay also we don't operate mean? like on a cash right. um, yeah. basis so it makes things really complicated for people because they don't see how you can spend money that you don't have but right. that, yeah that's yeah. Right. Right. exactly we don't, we don't operate yeah. as cash uh, accounting of things so that makes it really complicated to, to try to wrap your head around about how it's placed there because it's not funded and, in that same way that you or I would run our well, house. And, and maybe it, it, I, I think the point that one of the reasons why this exists in the first place is because of um, not transferring funds that were supposed to be. So, so in fact, it's an imaginary deficit being paid for by an imaginary number. <laughs> there you go. Right. I, I mean, well, I know it's not, it's not all that, but, but, but part of this is simply maybe a long-term reconciliation of, of, yeah. of, of, of the numbers. Okay. And, and one of the further reasons to pay it off is because things like that end up when they when they give us our final account, there there are notes in there that you you messed up here or you messed up there and you need to correct this. And that's one of the things that they will look at. And when we go to borrow money, then the bank looks at it and says, Well, you know, I I understand that you're pledging your your worth here, but at the same time, you're you're running a deficit that you aren't paying off. We we don't like that. We're going to increase your interest rate. Okay. That's what the auditors can do to me. That's right. Yes. That is. That answers that part of my question. Okay. So thank you, everybody. You're very welcome. The third bucket is. The third one. Can I just ask a really quick question? Oh, what sorry. is the SU? Food service oh. line. I was just curious what that sandwiches. Means. So there's two different um, things that happen with the right. SU, at least from what I can see in the past, um, is that some of the revenue is uh, directly sent to the SU, and in some cases that revenue was transferred from the SU back out to the schools, but in other cases it wasn't. Okay. And so you've got like a surplus balance on the SU when really it may have normally been distributed out to these other schools. Okay. Um, and then you also have your dinner program, which um, or the summer program, which may right, be running separately. Some of that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Okay. So the third one is um, one of our action items we listed is to establish a capital projects fund, and so um, this is a recommendation from our consultant, um, not just because of the EEI project, but it would certainly um, assist us with the EEI project. In the event that your uh, bond does not pass, you would be able to use any money we set aside in that fund 
to be able to uh, do some needed repairs that absolutely have to be done even if your bond does not pass um, because there are required uh, repairs that have to happen anyway. Um, the other thing it could do is if you had decided that you were going to start paying principal payments on the bond immediately, you could decide to fund the first year payment with that capital improvements fund or you leave it sitting for those moments when there is something that needs repair that wasn't included in your EEI bond. So. Principal or interest? I have a question. Principal. Principal. Yeah. Go ahead, what happened to the $164,414 difference? Yeah. The, the balance, the difference between what we just laid out in the three buckets oh. and the total amount. And there's, there's a... So basically, the reason why we're not making the balance of all three of these add up to be mm -hmm. exactly what's on your fund balance report from the auditors is A, because you are give, being given draft numbers. We don't want to back you into a zero mm -hmm. balance mm -hmm. and then have them come back and say, oops, we missed this. That's not likely to happen, but we don't want to make it happen. The other reason is that in your current fiscal year, FY18, that's not considered into this at all. What happens if because of something that, say, happens at one of our schools, we have to spend $100,000 to fix something, and we didn't have it in our budget. If we make this go down to zero, then we end a deficit in the current year. So this is a slush fund? It's, it's not no, a slush fund. You are allowed it's to going leave, into the general You're bond. allowed to leave a certain amount of unrestricted fund balance in your general fund. <laughs> it's and wiggle it's a room. Small, it's a pretty small amount compared to you know, the overall okay. surplus. Okay, I can look and at And then that. when we get the, n the next audit, if there's a mm. surplus. Surplus, then you roll it towards your new budget. Yep, again. Now, we do have a capital improvements, uh, is that what you call it? Capital projects fund or capital improvement fund designated for the high school currently, correct? What's yes, the balance do. on that? 240,000. So this would be creating one for the entire? For the entire district. 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 And the plan is to maintain the high schools separately? Yes. Separately, yeah, I think we have to. Does it continue to get paid into, adopted. or is it going to be phased out in favor of a district-wide? We will eventually move to a district-wide, but it was decided in the Articles of Agreement that if each of the schools had raised money for different purposes, mm -hmm. right, right, that it right. would remain in the school until it was used up. That makes the sense. Yeah. And that is the only one, though, correct? That is None the only the capital <coughs> improvement fund for any of the schools, yes. Well, that's all that's left? That's only the high school. Okay. Yep. Okay. Questions okay. on that, John? What's that? Did you have a question? I don't know. You look quizzical. So, the, so <laughs> if we're having these two capital funds, does the high school have to dip into its fund first before it can touch? No. It's a board vote. It basically. would. It would board make decision. sense, wouldn't yes. it, that <clears throat> you would wipe out the individual fund first? If the project you were using it for specifically was for the high school, that would well, be yeah, sense. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah, you can't, can't I'm use sure it we for can get there yeah. someplace yeah. or the other. I'm school. sure there's plenty, if, <laughs> especially if your bond doesn't pass. <laughs> but looking, <laughs> looking at, our, at our project estimation, the high school is the place that has the problems, and so they're probably going to be the ones that will be coming into it first. Right. So you, 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 um, you, you, fund a fund through something on the expenditure side, right? It's a revenue. Okay. Yes. How does the fund get made, right? It's it's somewhere on this it's not on the expenditures here, right? She so makes an entry in the ledger. It's not on there this So it year. doesn't it doesn't show up here. It does not. So where you'll see it is in your audit reports. You'll see a fund balance and some of it will be restricted for capital projects and some of it will be restricted for uh, the food service to go into this fiscal year but if um, we f if we were funding it it would be on here as a fund transfer like okay. the one yeah. going to yes, yes. you will see a one-time fund transfer go into it and then once that happens the money is already in that other fund <coughs> right. but there's nothing in the in these proposed budgets to fund anything other than the food service because the proposal is to fund it from from the, the surplus the expected surplus oh the surplus yeah. right yeah. Yeah. Got it. sorry and in previous years, we've needed a separately warned right. article yeah. to fund the high school. Right. Mm -hmm. A surplus. Right. Okay. Does it make any sense to consider, when we discuss okay. this later, um, next meeting maybe, that 
is it possible to use funds from the high school capital improvement fund towards lowering the principal of the bond that we're considering? There's not enough well, there the to make to make any yeah. appreciable difference. And the You're bond better is off to have the, to have the money available to fix other things. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I mean if there was a million dollars that you were going to dump well, into it's a quarter that. of a million dollars. Well, yeah, but <laughs> Okay. That's fine. I just wanted to bring that up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any any questions on this? Thoughts? Discussion, George? You good? I, I, oh. Without making any formal declaration, I think that we should move to we address. See. Motion on the floor. We still have a motion on the floor. On the, the table. motion on the floor. Oh. Before we go to address these items on the. Well, these next are actually an action item, so we won't be doing okay. them until we get down there. Okay. Um, does that conclude your? It concludes our presentation. Yes. Okay. Um, Perhaps a reminder of what the motion is on the floor. We, we do have the motion is to accept version three. Mm -hmm. of the budget are we in a place to do that yeah, or it, it, uh, is the administration in, in a place to, to do that the administration is in a place to yes get behind version three and if you're ready for a decision this evening we still have to meet next week folks because we just <laughs> because we, because we have some action have items the related to the, the land, land swap right. deed and the um I know. Sorry, energy I efficiency done, resolution <laughs> And sign the warrant. But would you <laughs> want to take another week to do any more tweaking? Right. That's. I've gone don't from two to three, and are there. No, is they're there done. We think we've really been sleeping and eating budgets for the last three weeks. Everyone's ready. I think what Mark is trying to say good? is that he doesn't think that you're done. No, I just. <laughs> my, posse, my posse back here is good too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. In Mark's words, not mine. Thumbs up. In terms of the timing. Wait, wait, Christina. Honestly. Hello. Sorry, I hate to ask this because I was not here last week, but is, is there a simple way to outline for me the glaring differences between version two and three? Like what? They're, are, they're all the notes. They're all in the just, notes. Just, yeah. that's, based, that's basically, basically that's yeah. it. Yeah. So the one, okay. the one shows, the, the one shows between one and two. One and two, and the other shows two between and two okay. and three. Yeah. And Christina, um, there, were, there, there was about two pages worth of uh, questions that I've answered. Yeah, I saw those okay. questions, yeah. 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 Okay. Do we have any significant number of board members who feel that they need the, t the time to be able to sit with this before feeling really comfortable voting one way or the other on this budget? I, mean, I don't. I don't think so. But I'm not sure what the what the rush is. I mean, we got we have to meet next well, week. George and there may George. be some different there may be some changes <laughs> I don't know <laughs> well uh, there would be changes unless the board provides guidance to the administration okay. remember you tell us what you think the right. taxpayers will afford and then we have to go back and figure that out but at this point the recommendation from administration is version 3 okay. can I can I ask the principals um, what your comfort level is with version three of the proposed budget if you've seen it I'm sure you've seen it that's you too Beth <laughs> if you in case you didn't hear. <laughs> yeah. does it does it does it meet the needs of the students for VUHS yes okay. I'm, I'm very comfortable with the budget okay Matt yes you hesitated are there glaring are there You're a unified district so it meets the needs of the students. That was the question, right? Yes. That is the question, yes. Yep. Okay. I'm so curious to know more. I'm seeing heads <laughs> nodding over here. Oh, don't, okay. don't push him in a corner like that. He said no, yes. No, I, I know. Okay, okay. All right. All right, well. So it just, Travis, just Beth? Yeah. yeah, they said they both yeah, they nodded. I didn't hear <laughs> The community's taxes are going up, mm -hmm. regardless of our, I know. Right. regardless of what we do. Well, unless we, could, you know. And they're going up by a significant <laughs> amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Through no fault of our own. This isn't, this, I mean, this, as far as I can tell, the administration has been fairly. Well, they um, brought it in under what the state tells us yeah, that we have to right. raise it. Right. So, but 
I this seems like a very reasonable budget to me, um, but I, but our taxes are going to go up, and mm -hmm. and I'm I don't want the budget to fail, and so I just. I mean, honestly, I don't think that we could get this budget down to where our taxes would not go up, could we? No. Without we would, we severely, would severely crippling yes. the schools. Yeah, and it would move into more personnel. Right. Income. So before, and I don't think any one of us really, really want to go there. Um, are there, though, for the sake of argument, any other areas that we think there could be cuts? I would say, at this point, other than personnel. Um, it doesn't seem like, I'm going to answer my own question. I've been over this. <laughs> um, it doesn't seem like that's possible. Yeah. You know, I would, it just doesn't. I haven't, I don't know enough about the intricacies of each individual school to be like, oh yeah, that guy, mm. you know, that guy that you paid to just sit in the boiler room watching mm. the dials, like he could go. Um, I imagine you've probably looked into that, like that guy, that position yourself already and have given him a talking to. But that's, so a, that's, that's part of the point here, Finn. Uh, you know, I think some of our attention has, you know, we have to keep attention, we have to focus attention on a lot of things. If we don't pay attention to our buildings, we're not going to have great learning environments for our kids to be in. And, and we, we haven't done a great job of that, so it's caught up to us. We have to provide great quality educational opportunities for our kids. So we are doing that. I believe we're maintaining a good program. We have to pay attention to class size. We can't have eight to 10 and 11 kids in a classroom anymore. That's not good stewardship. We believe kids can have great opp learning opportunities in, lar in, in a little bit of a larger class size. We're working more closely across the district. Um, Sue and I in the next month will be meeting with some neighboring school districts to see if there are ways in which we can work together on other ways to save money and be efficient. Some of these are short-term wins and some are longer-term um, things that we have to address. But at this point, I think coming in under a level-funded budget, get, just coming through negotiations and a new health care transition plan is pretty good. I think it's, it's very good. And, and while no one likes to see movement with staff, I think it's responsible and it's defensible. Okay. Well, and to ask, answer Tom's question, I, if I'm doing my numbers right, it's about a penny for every $100,000. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to go down nine cents, yeah, that's what it means. $900,000 cut. Yeah. All right. Yeah. In the, in the, so you're, you're reversing it. Yeah. Every penny that we lower in the tax rate means a $900,000 cut in the budget? No. no. $100,000 cut. 100000 Got it. One penny, 100000 oh, So yeah, we wanted to drop very it. symmetrical. Mm. If I'm, I'm I, and I'm not a mathematician, and it's my okay. phone calculator, so All right. <laughs> okay. very basic. I could be completely wrong. If Mel's out there, he'll tell me. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> he'll tell me. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> okay. So, if people are feeling comfortable, I will call the vote. All in favor of adopting version three of the budget? Should I say the amount? In the amount of uh, <laughs> twenty-one million one hundred six thousand two hundred sixty-one dollars. Thank you. Yes. Please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, now we have a meeting <laughs> <laughs> to begin. Do you realize <clears throat> this was two meetings? All right, so there was a superintendent report and business manager report in a, for the month as well. Anyone have questions on those items? Or do you guys have additional comments? I do want to mention, however, that um, the three elementary principals have reports. Um, we do not have a report from the high school this evening. Um, Stephanie and I have been working on a special project, and quite frankly, that's, that has encompassed a lot of our time and attention. Is it decoupage? <laughs> <laughs> Scrap looking. <laughs> so, um, Elizabeth, do you know when we are expecting the audits? So my, I just actually had a conversation yesterday morning with the auditors. Um, I keep on a regular basis asking them when our drafts are coming through. Um, they've been forthcoming with any information I'm requesting, um, but they're still not giving us the actual drafts. It is clearly because of their own uh, scheduling issues. They've put that in an email to us 
Um, they took on a lot of new clients this year because there was one whole auditing firm that left the state of Vermont that no longer does school audits. <coughs> so they were requested upon to do a lot more audits this year than they have in the past. Um, my understanding is they're supposed to come see all of you on the 12th, which is your February meeting, mm -hmm. yes. um, and present those drafts. They are supposed to give me at least three weeks before that time to review those drafts before they come to that board meeting. So that doesn't give them a whole lot of time left. That's what I've been. Who audits the auditors? Mm -hmm. The board. Really? You 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 hire the auditors. Oh, the unfortunately, there's not a lot of them in the state of Vermont. Yeah, now he's back lit with In fact, they're not really in the state. They're in Maine. Yeah, they're in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, given that they come in February and give us the draft presentation, <clears throat> how long until you actually get the printed binder? If there's basically that's up to them as far as the processing part but if there's no changes or recommendations or questions from me to them or from you to them then the draft doesn't change it okay. becomes a final and they just reprint and bind it and so, send it electronically well we were required by the state to provide them with this audit before February weren't we Publishers Clearinghouse, yeah, yes. yeah, they have to send it through the Clearinghouse for the single yes. audit. Yes, which usually the state uh, requires you to send towards the end of January or January. early February. Yeah. So they can file an extension though, and the auditors have to file it for us. Okay. To submit that. Because that was a problem that we've had in previous years. It's your single audit. It's not your entire audit, but it's your single audit, which deals with your federal programs. Federal grants. Okay. Yeah. So the liability is on the shoulders. It's of on the, the shoulders of the auditor. Auditors firm. at this okay. point. Okay. Okay. So any questions for Joanne or Elizabeth on their what they included in their reports? Um, I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about the assistant principal. Sure. Hired, the, the way it happened. The sure. The fact that it's interim. So yep. how would <coughs> absolutely happen in this in Steph, spring? Can you help me? Yes. Thank um, you. Uh, First of all, I want to say, and I, I think we shared, I have a, a, a pretty rigorous hiring process um, that I, I, I put to good effect here uh, numerous times, so um, I feel confident in the way the hiring is done, and uh, we had a, a, a screening committee screen. Um, uh, there were 12 applicants in the pool, um, which was a, a much more robust pool than I anticipated at this time of year. Uh, they uh, interviewed five candidates and moved two forward. And uh, one was uh, uh, from out of state, um, and Joanne and I interviewed them together. Uh, I mean, together we interviewed each candidate. <laughs> um, so the uh, backing up to the, the position is interim because it was a, a mid-year position that uh, we, we've made that a practice here. Um, and with an interim posting comes a kind of a, a you know, a, a unique set of um, needs, I think. A, a position that starts during the normal cycle of a of beginning of a year, often can, tra can transition to a system the year before, get to know has is different than someone who <coughs> is expected to hit the ground running on day one of the second semester. Um, so, uh, so there's that. Uh, the uh, any interim posting, we, we will repost in a permanent position the following year if, you know, that that becomes what we do. Um, so uh, the the position is designed to uh, take advantage of some uh, anticipated changes in staffing that I can see in the near and perhaps far future. So I'm building capacity for um, a, a change in the leadership structure quite a bit. A lot of the uh, instructional leadership piece and and. Uh, proficiency-based learning responsibilities um, is moving to, um, uh, well, what is currently known the guidance office, but because I think there's a lot of uh, potential in the guidance office to do that work that hasn't been, uh, hasn't been realized. So I think the idea of, of the guidance office as it is now is a little bit obsolete and doesn't reflect uh, the demands on school systems now with uh, flexible pathways. So, that said, I'm narrowing the position of assistant principal in the future. Um, but right now, it, the position is, is the position. So uh, I believe that the candidate we selected had the skills that we needed um, 
for that position to hit the ground running, has a, a deep familiarity with uh, the system that we have here, uh, has committed himself to um, supporting students, um, is a coach in every sense of the word, and um, is well qualified. So. so does that mean when you're, when you're um, posting the position again in the spring, it'll have a different flavor uh, job description? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, more narrow. More narrow, yep. okay. Stephanie, could you share what the committee makeup like? Was it parents and teachers and different from different areas? Yes. Or? Yeah. Uh, we had. Uh, um, can you help me? I can't remember who's on the committee. Um, uh, what? Beth Adrian. Beth, uh, Beth Adrian chaired the committee. Thank you. Um, we had uh, para educators, um, uh, teachers. Uh, I think we had three students on the committee. Um, we had teachers that were parents. Uh, we didn't. No, wait. We had two parents. I'm sorry. We had okay. two parents on the on the uh, on the uh, committee too. So it was a pretty pretty broad committee. Um, yeah. Thank you. Other questions for Joanne or Elizabeth? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Principals reports. Stephanie, did you have anything that you wanted to say? Or well, I, or I not, would like I to mean. recognize Mason yet again. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, he was honored uh, as uh, one of uh, Vermont's presidential scholars, and unfortunately, uh, due to an emergency, and I haven't had a chance to apologize to you directly, but I was called away. I had my coat on and ready to get in my car and drive to Montpelier for the reception, and I ended up having to stay in the building. So, um, how was the reception? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. Good. Um, and we had a little bit of an incident last week with some cold weather, weather and water and uh, some, uh, you know, um, damage that we're still trying to assess uh, with the facility mm -hmm. and the gym floor. And I uh, spent some time enjoying the fresh air. Um, and uh, we uh, have done a, sort of a partial uh, kind of a, a recap of that. I've certainly relived that uh, in my mind. And you know your best laid plans for emergency evacuations. We, we d I, I don't think I ever considered that we might be evacuating in uh, nine degree weather, and that our evacuation site is could possibly be too far to get to in that kind of weather. So uh, we've had a lot of conversation. We we're talking to first responders. <coughs> and we're going to have a formal after action review. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, Questions about the other principal's reports or comments or? Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Um, Beth, what, what's IXL Math? Is that an online program? IXL, actually, I think the next time you folks come over to, um, to Ferrisburg, we'd love to do a presentation for you. So it is an online math program to supplement student learning. Um, and Peter uh, Stapleford has done a pilot program with it this year in fifth and sixth grade and <coughs> presented to the faculty at the faculty meeting last week about not just the fact that it, it can give some great extension activities to these students, but it really tracks their, um, it, it, it has an analytics piece where if a student needs um, remediation in something, they can, he can track that immediately and he sees it in real time. And if they're doing a particular activity, he can see right then and there who's being successful, who needs a little extra lift up, and he can go right to that group and work right with them. So I, I think it'll be really exciting for him to do um, a presentation for you. Cool. So, so it's one of, one of the challenges I think we've had with technology <coughs> of this sort is that um, in terms of differentiation, kids get kind of put in front of the computer without much guidance from the instructor. This tends to be, this tends to be, um, you know, <coughs> they've already had their, they, they've already done, he's done the, the instruction for the class, they've been working on um, problems, they've been, you know, it, this is more towards like the last 15 minutes maybe of the class where some kids are still getting remediation for what ha for the original instruction and other kids are like, well, okay, we've done that, we've been successful, we've met proficiency, where do we go now? And it gives them the opportunity to, and the other thing that, and I, I don't, I'm not um, as proficient with IXL as he is, um, and one of the things I think he would tell you is that it also gives kiddos that have already met a proficiency in one ear. So 
um, you know, adding fractions or something. He's already, they've already met that proficiency. They can sort of play around with other conceptual pieces of math that they may not have been able to do that before. I mean, it's still focusing on math, but they've, they've met their proficiency. They've, in some areas, even extended their proficiency, and now it gives them some time to extend even further. But it, 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 what, what we're not seeing is that they walk in for their, um, you know, for their math block and they're put in front of a computer. That's not, this, that's not it at all. Um, it is really an extension. Or, or in extension. another room with a computer while the <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, I mean, right. it, it, it happens. Yes, so that's yes. My, that's my, yeah, I, technology is great. I just don't want yeah. it to become a crutch for not differentiation. That great. Not at all, not at all. It, 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 is, mm -hmm. it is actually mm -hmm. helping them to meet the needs of all students. And Travis, did you get to go to Snowball yet? Right, what? The Snowball, when's that happening? <clears throat> That's going to be next Friday. Nice. Yeah, then we're going to be going. So we're excited. Well, I think everybody's going to have a good time. We will all hope for good weather for you. Thank you. <laughs> also from Sounds Travis, fun. what do the kids get to do with their Eagle dollars? Um, well, we actually just had that discussion today. So their they're Eagle dollars, they get to turn them in for the Eagle feathers, and then they... <laughs> <laughs> and I get to put the feathers on the eagle, which it's bald when it's gone, and then I get to add it to it. Um, I pluck it. Uh, but um, no, they get to earn. This time we're going to do kind of an outdoor carnival, uh, winter winter carnival. So oh. when we earn that, uh, we're going to try to do a lot of activities that will involve outdoor activities, such as um, skiing, snowshoeing, those kinds of things. So that's. The goal, depending on the weather. Good. Let's see. Anything else? Um. <coughs> oh, uh, Matt. The heat. Are we doing okay with the heat? Music. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, I was referring to your report. pursuing uh, the, the organization that's bringing us that piece, uh, but we're in a waiting pattern, uh, so. Good luck. Just the music room is without you. It's just, it's basically just the music room? Well, yeah, yeah the unit vents are, um, the, so, so when the power went out over vacation, um, it impacted the ability to circulate through the unit vents, and they have a coil, and the coil essentially mm -hmm. erupted, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term, and <coughs> uh, we don't have any extras because why, why would we they function normally? <coughs> um, and so we're waiting for that piece to come in. <coughs> and Ken, is, we're really just waiting for that, that one piece. That's good. And I was curious, that you, you said, um, and you mentioned it last time, and you mm -hmm. brought the, the top five positive and negative. You had a climate and culture meeting. Is that an ongoing Yeah, thing and recurring? I actually switched those. It, we actually had a PBIS meeting this. So we'll be talking about it. When is it? Is it Monday or a week from Monday? Yeah. We so, oh, so you do, so this is something you do every couple of weeks? Yeah. Oh. Or when there's no Mondays, it's really hard to have that. <laughs> <laughs> um, So we squeezed one PBIS and one culture. Right, right. Cool. Anything else for the principals? Okay. Mason? Well, um, Look with finals. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's next week. Yes. All right. Um, so, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd first like to say that uh, because the last meeting in December was on the 18th, not a lot has happened yet. <laughs> um, so that's why it might look a little lackluster um, this, this month. Um, first, as, as uh, Principal Taylor expressed, there was an incident on Tuesday, January 2nd. Um, I do believe there's a, a little flooding, but I think that was, uh, oh yeah, I think that was uh, solved very quickly, um, which was good. 
I also would like to appreciate all the students. Uh, they followed the uh, procedure very well, acted accordin accordingly. Uh, although it was uh, pretty cold out, they did um, act as a united school um, community uh, together. Finals are next week, uh, January 15th to the 19th, and that also ends, uh, marks the end of the first semester, moving on to the second semester. You can imagine why that's scary for seniors. Um, this upcoming uh, Monday is Martin Luther King Day, so there's no school. Um, then uh, various teacher and services days uh, coming up. Sports and ath athletics, uh, boys and girls basketball going on right now, and also uh, VUHS uh, wrestling. They continue to have uh, numerous tournaments and bring home uh, lots of wins, which is good. Seniors. so. Uh, Various scholarship opportunities still present. Um, deadlines for college submissions have uh, already passed or are either quickly approaching. Uh, many of those are on the 15th, so, um, yep. Um, the bake <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. And um, uh, there was a bake sale uh, held for the senior class on the uh, Thursday before uh, break, which went okay. Um, it, it was all right. Um, there was also, there, sorry, I'm a little tired tonight. Saturday, uh, on January 27th, there will be a winter ball uh, sponsoring, sponsored by the senior class. The theme will be uh, galactic, so like a space type theme. Um, and for extra coming up, tomorrow um, is the theater arts play, uh, which I am also involved in, called <laughs> Dab to the King. Um, it's, the dance move, not, yeah. Um, it's all, yeah. it will be, yeah, yeah. It'll be held from uh, 945 to uh, 1050, and it details um, the current kind of political landscape that's going on right now. Farmer Column Sense. Column Sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I am, uh, if any of you know me outside of pretty much where I am right now, um, I'm kind of, I'm not a typical Vermonter. Um, I don't know how to like explain that, but my character is like the uh, the typical generic like deep Vermont accent. He kind of comes from Madison County, you know. He's got that kind of <laughs> thing going on, and uh, he kind of stands up to uh, the uh, the kind of the main character who's King Dolan Strump. <laughs> uh, and then it's just big story going on uh, around that. Uh, it's it's actually said that this will be the kind of the most, in, in Chris Wyckoff's words, who's the teacher kind of directing it, the most legendary um, theater as performance. Because we actually have props this time, which will be uh, nice. And then um, awesome. make theater great again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. When is, when is the when is <coughs> tomorrow? Tomorrow from 945 to 1050, I believe. Did they? They did. Yeah. 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm going to show up. Yeah. Oh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good man. Thank you. Yeah. Still memorizing a little bit of my lines. <laughs> you still have time. Be taped? Uh, yeah, I believe it will. Um, should be. Let us know, would you? Yeah. It will. That's great. Well, thank you. Good luck with all of that. It sounds like you have a, a lot a going on. Yeah. <laughs> You're telling me good luck. Break a leg. Well, he's at finals and. Yeah, don't break a leg at finals. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Okay, great. Um, I, I, I <coughs> am with Mason. We just had a meeting. I didn't have anything to share, so. <laughs> No report. Um, do any of the committees need to have a report? Community Engagement <coughs> Committee? I don't believe. Our chair is not here, but we have nothing to report. I don't believe you've met. Yeah. We, we meet next week. We have week. a meeting coming yeah. up. Okay. We could report that. Yeah. We meet next week. All right. Next week. Yeah. Uh, policy? We, we will meet sometime before the February um, mm -hmm. meeting. And that, that meeting is to review 10 policies, right? To get in the ongoing schedule of ongoing right. review of, po of the policies that we have. Right. And if you have any that you want looked at, send me a note, this is the last, last chance. <laughs> <laughs> now or never, right? Till next year. Facilities? Uh, so we just met 
Um, we're because we wanted to have a <coughs> conversation about the um, how to communicate, uh, plan to communicate the the bond right. uh, vote to the public. Um, just uh, in general terms, we're going to be um, uh, commu it, it will be a multi-tiered uh, uh, project. We will be going to select boards and town meetings. Um, we will be communicating uh, ultimately with uh, with the service groups, the service groups in in, in the in the community, um, public communication with. Uh, letters to the Addison Independent, to the Eagle, the Citizen, um, uh, perhaps the Valley Voice. Uh, we hope to have a public forum, um, uh, perhaps after the February 12th board meeting. Um, uh, and we hope to um, produce a video. Uh, of the same type that we had that that the that the administration produced for the about the new hires um, that mm. we can so we the goal is to make sure that the public knows what why we have to have this bond and what it will do for the for the the schools in the district um, so that's what we talked about and what it'll do for the bottom line and that it'll save us at right. least thirty five thousand dollars. <laughs> Right. Every oh, and year. Tom, you're on the agenda for the city council meeting on yeah. the 13th. Thank you. Guaranteed. <coughs> Guaranteed. Excellent. Thank you. Um, finance committee, any? Uh, we are going to meet on 122.18. Right. That's right. To, to review the annual. Well, yeah, we're going to provide report. some support for the annual report. Yes. Right. Um, Hanford, Kerr? Um, I'm missing that meeting tonight. They were, they were meeting tonight. Oh, sorry. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have no report. Okay. Um, and Lori's not here. Okay. So we are up to action items. <clears throat> Looking for a motion on the minutes. I'd so like, move. No. <laughs> I'd like to move to approve the minutes of December 18th, 2017 and January 3rd, 2018. Thank you. Second. Okay. Thanks, George. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Did anyone have any comments or changes to those minutes from those two meetings? All right. All in favor of approval of those minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Uh, bills and directors' orders? Yep. I um, completed a review. Wait, make the motion. Okay. I would like to approve the bills and directors' orders. I didn't add it up. <laughs> For payroll of nine. Do you have the total number? Of 900, sorry, I, I wrote the wrong, I wrote them down. It's separate, I didn't add them up. There's your nine in there somewhere. $933,899.56. For payroll. And for checks, $1,496,580. Is there a second? Second. Okay. I, re I reviewed the, um, Checks the bills and orders on 1 9 2018. Thank you for doing that. So, what was the the first amount? It was 933899.56. Thank you. That's payroll and checks. Yep. Okay. okay. Any questions? To clarify, you are just at the, the function here is that you're checking that they're valid um the, the the function here is that the board needs to be aware and um educated on the financial ongoing of the school district and the finance um committee has taken it as a charge from this board to <coughs> review the bill, bills on a monthly basis to pay attention to the trends and themes of what's going on um, the audit is to make sure that the, that everything is clean. Mm. Our goal is to make sure that we, as a board, understand what's happening on a daily basis with the money of this district. Is there anything that you feel that we need to understand? Um, I mean, I, we what the way that we do this is we, you know there's um, the second um, thing that you should know is that the treasurer signs every single check mm -hmm. and reviews every single invoice. 
So there's a lot of accountability there as well. Um, we review 10 random um, checks and trace them back all the way to the purchase order. So it's sort of like a mini internal audit. And we look at all, Spot I mean, check. I kind of take a look at all of the, um, all of the expenses that are there, so. Okay, Ben? Yeah. I was on that committee in a previous year, and one of the things that we did is we, we went through and we reviewed different bills, and one of the things that we identified was that we were paying late fees. And so we talked to the administration about that, and, and they made a big effort to make sure that we were paying things on time so that we weren't paying the late fees. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's an additional expense over anything that you could budget. Right. And, and so it's things like that that John is looking for when he's, when he's in there. He, he looks if there's a late fee or if there isn't a purchase order attached to the, to the payment that's made or mm -hmm. things of that nature. Okay. It'll happen monthly. Mm. Okay. So all in favor of approving those bills and director's orders, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm. All right. This brings us to our video security camera policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll move that we, I'll move forward um, F43 video security cameras. I second that. Okay. So there were just a couple minor changes from last time we saw it. Um, yeah, so all of these changes are uh, the result of being vetted by the VSBA lawyer. Mm -hmm. And um, some are, are, are to make a little bit more sense of, uh, and more spe specificity of some of the language. And um, the viewing, the whole, the, 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 the cutting of the viewing <coughs> part is um, because essentially all of that language is in number five authorization to review of recordings right mm -hmm. we don't we just don't need it and it was redundant and actually it kind of um had conflict yeah it kind of they were at conflict with each other a little <coughs> bit so do you want to say i mean i appreciate the, the opportunity because we really would like to um turn on our security cameras and we we need to right. be able to communicate this to the families and the students Right. Um, and this is a good policy. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about it? Okay, I went through it already. Okay, so all in favor of adopting that policy, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, set capacity limit for school choice. So we need to um, set a limit annually for how many students we allow in and out of our high school to through the school through the state school choice to attend or come from <laughs> other public high schools, right? And the administration has a recommendation of 10, 10 in, 10 out. 10 That's in, what we've out. been doing. That's just for the high school? Just, yes, yeah. yes. <coughs> Anyone in grades nine through 12. 12. 12. Okay. So and this is unrelated to the policy to be recently passed regarding yes, It is class. unrelated, right. I move so that we, need we a motion. Uh, accept the administration's recommendation that we accept that we have a school choice uh, allowing 10 students to come in and 10 students to go out. Second. Okay. Questions? Discussion question. What's the limit set on the elementary level? The it's state. Five it's five. Of the I'm sorry. The elementary level for school choice is what percent did we? It was five well, percent. This, this is all about outside yeah. of our district, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. So that yeah. Con this, this conversation is a different is conversation. All about Understood. So um, given that it's outside of the district, what's the limit for elementary school? There to be honest, I don't have the policy in front of me. Um, is it one percent? No, it was five percent. Five percent. Five percent. Yeah. Wait, okay. what, what are we talking Ooh. about here? For the elementary school. Intra. Intra. That's, that's five percent. In our own district, yeah. we're this not is, losing this is, any. This question of was from outside. kids, from outside. students from yeah. outside, which is. What if a fourth grader wants to go to Shalott? No. Oh, you can't. You can't. No, no. can't. That's against the state. No. It's. It's. Yeah. This is. High school. High school. It's only school yeah. I mean, they, school. you as you a parent, you could go to Charlotte and, and petition and see if there's you tuition you can pay right. or whatever. Or you but, could yeah. move. Hmm. We don't want that, though. We don't. We want them, all those Charlotte kid families to move down here. I think she meant me. No, no. <laughs> 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 so we don't want. Yeah, yes, that's don't right. Anyway. She wasn't just. <laughs> so, so this is extra district. Yes. And it's 10-10, yeah. Yes. And how many students do we currently have in? 
in and out, like yeah. actually. Uh, well, uh, we currently have six going out. Yeah. Yep. Year, and we'll have, again, I think when it's graduated, we'll have room for six coming in next year. So currently we have six out and five in? Yes. Okay. Okay. So it seems like 10 and 10 is fulfilling mm -hmm. our Sufficient demand for the time as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So those yes. five, are they going to Walden or? Uh, no, Walden wouldn't count in this because that's our like school. That. Yeah. What? They come in. To yeah, they come in and go, go to Walden. Walden. Yeah, they come in and go to Walden. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I misunderstood your question. Oh. <coughs> people elect and go Give to me go. Give a second. I'll look. I just had a I'll bet some of them go to people Middlebury. From, you're saying people from Charlotte. No, we no, have no, students that coming, go into Trenton County as well as Addison County South mm -hmm. and at South Burlington. We've had students go to CVU. We'd Mount Abe. Mount Abe. But, but, you, but Lori's asking about the students that are coming in. Right. Right. Uh -huh. And if they're coming in for Some are coming into Walden. Reason. Some are just coming into a traditional, the traditional setting okay. in the building. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. So all in favor of setting that limit at 10 and 10, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, um, E, authorize superintendent to offer contract for interim assistant principal at BUHS. So moved. Second. Who's that? Give it to Christina. Four. Five. Okay. Five. Two out of five. Two out of five. Thank you. Sorry. There you go. Okay, so we have a motion to authorize Joanne to offer the as interim assistant principal contract. Any discussion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay. All right, we scratched F and G. I'm sorry you have to come back next week for those items. It'll be quick. Resolution. It will be quick. She still have to come. Uh, resolution for use of the fund balance. Elizabeth, we'll have the language for you. Um, so in your packet that we discussed for previously, um, the, one you handed the last, today. last two page. pages, last actually, page. because we act, this is kind of a two-step process, because in order to approve the use of the fund balance to put into a capital projects fund, we also need to approve capital to project. establish a capital projects fund. So it's kind of a two-part thing. So the first one is the language to approve the resolution to establish a capital projects fund. And then the second one is to approve the use of the fund balance in the three different. So we need it actually as two separate, separate motions. We need them as two separate motions. Okay. I move that we establish a capital projects fund for the 2018-2019 fiscal year. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I do have a question. Um, yeah. Remind me if I'm wrong, but when we did the capital project fund for the high school, we set a, aside a certain percentage, was it, of the budget or not? No, that was separate. That was that a separate, was separate thing. Okay. I just wanted to um, clarify. Also, uh, Finn read a capital projects fund for the 2018 19 mm -hmm. fiscal year. I don't think we want to say it's just for the 2018. You see, so you didn't write that down. You just, yeah, okay. Just, I think that could do it anyway. Well, that's a, that was my question as well. I'm yeah, I think it's to set aside this particular chunk of money for the FY18-19 fiscal year. I don't think that means that you actually need to um, spend that capital improvements money in that fiscal year. What it's saying is you're setting it aside for that year, which means we can't spend it in the current fiscal year. But we're not establishing the, the fund. fund the, yeah. the, estab the fund's not established you, for the 18 19 yeah, Would you like to amend the motion? Fund, fund well, should be open-ended. <laughs> the question is what Glory has written down. I just put capital on uh, the so I didn't put that here. Great. All right. I guess okay. I misspoke. <laughs> no, no. According no, 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 to the official right, record, yeah. the official record says yeah. I didn't say that. So did, there we go. Because it, it's not linked right. to the year. That's it's, right. It's, yeah. It's, no, it's, I, it's, I know. Yeah. That was my question it's as well. Thing. Yep. So, okay. so Finn, would you like to restate your motion just for well, clarity's just as sake? The record st as the record states, what I actually said <laughs> was <laughs> that I moved to establish a capital projects fund. I heard it right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. You got it right. I, I yeah. misheard it. I, I apologize. Good. Yeah, you misheard. <laughs> so, all in favor of establishing a capitals project fund, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Now turn the page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who would like to make this motion? I so move. 
No, you can't do that, George. <laughs> I'm sure you can. It's not. But I'll say it if you want. Please. Yeah. I move that we approve the board resolution to assign the 2016-17 fund balances um, into the capital improvement fund and the other items listed here, the operating budget and the food service <clears throat> deficit. Okay. I second that motion. Is that enough specificity? You, you might in. want to have the dollar, the dollar amount. amount. Yeah. yeah. So $381,500 will go into the capital projects fund that was newly created. $650,000 will go into the district's operating budget and $423,961 will retire our food service fund deficit. Is that what you meant, George? Yes. That's what he said. I heard him say it. Okay. <laughs> it's in the record. And we have a, sure. and we have a second. I yes. said we have a second. I, I second that. Second. I, I do that was second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, any, any questions? More conversation? All right. All in favor of assigning those amounts to those areas, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. I'm looking for a motion to enter executive session. And where will we be for that? Uh, we'll have to go to the staff. Can you? Can you open up that classroom so we can have an executive session in there, please? Yeah, thank you. I move that we enter executive section for the discussion of a personnel matter. Do we need to well, the, And we end up inviting the superintendent. superintendent. Yeah. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 What happens, Dave? Thank you very much. <coughs>